I'm happy to be here with Tamsin Young. We're going to talk about some of the lessons learned on the entrepreneurial journey. So I hope this is inspiring for all of you, as well as the, the priorities that uh, Tamsin is going to be focusing on this year. And we'll check in with Tamsin again later in the year uh, on, uh, on, the, on the, the next progress interview. Um, Tamsin's in my group client program. So uh, Tamsin, thank you for doing this. And oh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so let's start with having you uh, introduce yourself to the audience and um, yeah, share share the work that you love to do. Okay, so I'm a money coach and I support women to be comfortable with their money and feel confident in making decisions with their, their finances. And I do this through a, a soul-centered approach where we integrate their, their financial goals along with their, their values, their beliefs and their purpose in life so that it's it's a um, all-encompassing thing. It's not just money and down that um, very linear logical um, path that one tends to think of of money. That it's just like a boring numbers thing. That we actually look at it from a more holistic way. And you are qualified to do this in multiple re for multiple reasons. Uh, do you want to say a bit about your your background and with money? Yeah. Um, so I'm a, a CPA, a certified practicing accountant based in Australia, and I've worked in with small businesses. I originally started in South Africa doing articles, working for the big four firms. I think I worked for three out of the four big firms. And, um, and then I came to Australia in 1998, and I've worked in tax accounting since then. And um, so I've, I've been in the accounting game for about 40 years. But I've always had uh, an interest in all things intuitive, holistic, um, alternative, whatever name you want to, to give them. And I've done a lot of studying in that way. But I always thought that you were one or the other. You're a linear and logical or a creative and intuitive. And I never thought that the two could be combined. And it's probably only in the last 10 years, even though I've spent 40 years studying it all, only in about the last 10 years that I've gone, wow, I am intuitive. I can be creative. You know, it's it's not something that I can dream about. It's not something reserved for only the people who are arty. We all have that within us. And, um, and I realized that's really the area that I want to work in. But I didn't want to throw away the baby with the bathwater and go oh, all those years that I've spent dealing with numbers and finances and go, oh, we won't worry about that. We'll just do the emotional, energetic mindset work. So while I don't want to be somebody's tax accountant or accountant and actually doing their, their numbers, I want to be able to assist them and use the knowledge that I've had from working with people, small businesses and that, and that people can have an understanding that they're not scared of it, that they can incorporate looking at their numbers as part of their business. It's not the be all and end all. It's not I don't look at money and numbers as being the driving force in your business that, right, we must set KPIs and we've got to have a six-figure business or we've got to have a million dollars or it doesn't matter what our goal is. It's part of a package. And um, so, yeah, you know, I, I use all those years that I have had of um, to helping people understand it and that they will know when they feel confident with their numbers, but they also know when to go and seek advice from somebody who's qualified, that they will go and find their own accountant, that they will find a bookkeeper to support them. It's not about you having to do everything yourself. So it's it's really a support to, to give you that um, springboard to go out there and include the numbers in your life. Yeah. And it's interesting that you went from the the numbers side over to the more intuitive side. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people watching or you know, watching this or listening um, are coming from the more intuitive side, and they're oh, I can I can be friends with numbers. Is that possible? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know? absolutely, absolutely, and 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 that's really what it's about is becoming friends with you. It, it, money is money is just money. You know, numbers are just numbers. They they don't they don't have any meaning on their own. Um, it's we assign meanings to them. I mean, well, what is magical about hitting a million dollars turnover? I know, somebody's decided that a six figure, hundred thousand, hundred thousand is like a magical number. A million's a magical number. Why? Somebody's just arbitrarily chosen that number for us to 
to strive towards. And one of my beefs is actually there's a difference between turnover and, and profit. And everybody focuses on the turnover um, number. Yeah, we've got to strive for this. But nobody yeah. worries about the bottom line, which is what you're actually taking home, which is what you're getting to to, to spend. It's it's your reward for all the work that you've done. So great, you've done a million dollars turnover. How much did you get to take home from that? And yeah. more importantly, how did you enjoy earning that money? Because who cares about earning a million dollars if you don't enjoy the work that you're doing? You know, that's... And, and, and that's what I want to bring to people that they can think about. It's what did you earn? How did you earn it? How did you feel earning it? And what can you change? How can you move to make more of that money that you enjoy? And it may be a process. You may start doing one type of work, enjoy it, and then you want to change. You want to move into something else. So it's, it's never a case that this way is a bad way of, of earning money. It's your journey. It's very personal. Um, you can, I can provide a light structure, just like you provide a structure in the work that you do. You don't say, this is the way I do it. You have to do it my way. Otherwise, I'm going to kick you out the course. Um, otherwise, you there, there'd be a lot of us rebels there that you wouldn't have in the course. So it's about providing that structure of, of how to manage your finances, look after them, look at your business, the way you spend your money. You know, there's so many things to it that they're that, that touch points. And you get to decide what's important to you and how you want to, to do it. And it's that's where the intuitive side comes in. And you come in and you tune into yourself and what feels important. I can't tell you what is important to you in your business. You need to find that out for yourself. And that's part of the entrepreneurial journey as well, is, is finding out what's important to us. Yeah, and well said. And um, yeah, I love the way that you're, I guess, demystifying money. Uh, for a lot of people who like, yeah, have this kind of rigid way of, like you said, oh, the six figure is the goal or the seven figure is the goal or um, yeah, whatever figure. It's like, what is success? What is success? Why? And why? How did you get that idea? And yeah. why do you have to stick with it? You know? Yeah. And yeah. well, one of the things that I like to do with people is define success. What does success mean to you? Because it's only when you know, because how do you know you've achieved success? Is it when you've got the, the fancy car in your driveway and you've got three houses spread around the world? Or is it living a life that you really love and spending time with the people that you you enjoy spending time with, doing work that you enjoy doing? You know, that those are the things. And then you know, money is part of it because earning that money allows you to do those things. Because um, as much as we might want to say, oh, you know, money doesn't buy happiness, no, it doesn't, but it gives us choices and it allows us to have experiences that we we want. And when you look at it from that perspective, that it's not money isn't this evil that's going to take over your life. Um, money amplifies who you are. If you're a generous person, when you've got money, you'll be a more generous person. You can help more people. So I'm, I'm not against people earning lots and lots of money, but just earning lots and lots of money for the sake of proving that you're successful isn't the right intention behind doing the work that you do. So it's being very intentional about what you do and how you do it. Yeah, because success, when you typically, well, it's assumed, oh, that's a successful person. Oh, that's a wealthy person. That's just the, the, the assumption. That's what success yeah. means, right? Yeah. And so it's really, it's really, I think, key, like you said, to keep keep on returning to our own definition. Well, um, given that, you know, so when you work with people and um, they are stressed about money, which I know a lot of people are, um, what is your, yeah, what's your, what's your guidance there when you're, when people are stressed about money? It's, you know, they want to do the business that they love and yet well, the money thing, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. how do you, how do you encourage them, advise them? Yeah. Mm. Um, it's really taking them of finding out what is it that they want and and that's also not just from a or what do I want from a, a logical linear place I, I want to earn a hundred thousand dollars I want to earn a million dollars or whatever it's really tuning into their soul <clears throat> and and what is what is the big picture the picture that's bigger than what we can even imagine and, and having that as our our guiding star north star um of of 
the life that they want to create and always coming back to that. But then taking the time, I work with circles and like stepping into a creator circle, right? What does it feel like when you, you have this choice of having a magical business or of traveling around the, the, the world, whatever your choice may be? What does it feel like as a creator in that expansiveness? And then what does it feel like when you come from your ego? And what are all those beliefs? What are all those doubts and fears that you have? What are all the stories that you have? It, uh, our life experiences have taught us to be safe and to try and you know look after ourselves. You know, the good old ego saying, oh, don't do that. This might be dangerous. And, you know, you don't want to go and make a fool of yourself. And all those stories that we tell ourselves. And we look at that. And often by acknowledging those fears and that, that helps bring it into the light. Because people are often worried about saying it. Well, yeah, law of attraction. If I say I'm scared about X, Y, Z, I'm going to attract more of that into my life. But it actually, it shines a light on those fears, on those doubts. That you, and you know what you're dealing with. You go, oh, okay, that story. Right. Oh, I remember that. And whether you do or you don't go back to the originating story doesn't really matter. One of the tools that I use is tapping. And because that's great for bringing the body back into a more homeostatic um, place. And it's a very easy tool to use. But I really work on, let's say, working with circles and going, okay, so you've got your this is what it's like from my creative perspective. This is what it's like when I'm in my ego. What is the next step that I need to take to move from this ego-based thing to the creator side of things? And then all you have to do is take that next step. We don't have to worry about what the next 50 steps are. All I need to do is what is the next step that I need to do? Take that and move a little bit forward. And then we do it again, you know, rinse and repeat. So, um, yeah, it's really a case of helping them see it, see the stories that they, they have, and not being scared of them, just acknowledging them and going, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. Right, let's move forward. That is an empowering perspective. I really like that because um, there's, yeah, there, there's often this fantasy that there's some kind of like right path. And the reason why you're not making enough money is because you're not taking the right path. And of course, whoever the right path is, you know, they're selling you a course on what the, what the correct <laughs> path to money is. And usually, as all of us have probably experienced who are watching this, you buy the course, you buy the whatever program, and then you're like, yeah, that path doesn't feel authentic to me. And so what you're saying here is really important. It's like, actually, your right path, your authentic path, rather, is it's going to come out of you when you are yeah. connected to what you're calling your creator you know, energy, which is nice. Yeah. And yeah. if you are in a, if you're going to um, knowingly or unknowingly continue in the egoic energy or a fear energy, then yeah, it's the actions that come out are probably not going to be, um, yeah, they may or may not work sometimes, but they're not going to be authentic and it's not going to be a long-term uh, way. And so the creator path, yeah, I feel like that's what I've been practicing for all these years or many years now, you know, ever since I kind of started to do the joyful productivity thing and the energy reboots. And it's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to trust. I'm going to courageously experiment. And if something doesn't work out, um, there is always learning there and there's always trust continue trust that I can, I can practice. And yeah. with that, it's, it's, you know, it keeps me in the game and showing up consistently. And that's what has allowed me to continue thriving. But um, let's talk a bit about um, your, well, gosh, uh, where should I, where, where do we want to go from here? Um, I want to, well, definitely I want to talk about two things. One is, you know, I want to talk more about um, the kinds of things you do with your clients. So for your clients and, what you're offering at this time. But secondly, I definitely want to talk about what are you prioritizing in your own creator's path, um, your own authentic business this year that we can then later check in on. Uh, so whichever of those you want to take is, is great, whether you want to kind of start moving into your talking about the offer or talking about your priority um, or, or there's if there's something else on your mind that you feel is important to share. Yeah. Um, well, my priority this year is really creating that foundation because I've always been a little bit flighty with um, 
committing myself to to my business and you know like a lot of things it's always easier helping other people than actually doing it in your own life and um, you know we can be wonderful sages for other people we can see the pitfalls and and all that and we can give them all this beautiful loving advice and support but when it actually comes to ourselves it's a different story and you go oh mm, oh I've got to do that I've got to do that scary thing I've got to do that experimenting so it's really having that consistency for for me and you know with working with you it's that creating that consistent content and showing up on a regular basis and and sharing that message and sharing that message from the point of view of I'm just sharing what I'm doing without any um, form of attachment to it, without any expectation of it. And with the sharing, of course, it helps expand me. It helps me get clarity for myself and that journey that I will go on with what I'm offering and, and when I offer it, et cetera, will evolve as I get move with my my um my message. And um so it's it's not about being this is my message, boom, I'm stuck in this stone here and that's all I'm going to to do. It's moving with that flow and it's it is a journey. It's a, a river. And I, I like to refer to things as um the structure being the river bank providing the support and then you've got the water flowing and you know the masculine and the feminine and the yin and the yang, you know, I talk about the money management being that practical side and then the energy and mindset being the more yin side and we flow through the structure. So foundation is really important to me, that reaching out, creating my own net caring um, little world or, you know, for want of a better word, and um, those connections and really heart-based connections, not connecting with people because they can do something for me, but because they're like-minded people and maybe there is something there. But it's it's really nice to connect with people who have similar values to you, have similar interests to you and are on this wonderful entrepreneurial journey as well and all the little humps and bumps that we all go through and the experiences that you can go, oh, yeah, it's okay to have those experiences. We all have these doubts. We all have these fears. And to know that you're not alone. So those are probably my two key priorities is that consistent content and the, the net caring, which will lead to so many other aspects I know. Yeah. And it's the unknown of what they will lead to that um, you know, being a – a linear logic for so many years, you know, I've wanted this blueprint, I want a checklist, I want to know the exact way to, to do it so that I can sit down and do my stuff. But as I work more with my intuition and all that, I'm realizing that that's not the way it works. Soul doesn't have a blueprint, it doesn't have a checklist. And that's why we tune in regularly and go, right, it probably has got a big thing telling us what we need to do. But if we had to have that blue, um, blueprint, we'd probably turn around and run 100 miles because it would just go, wow, there's no ways I can do this. But all that synchronicity and serendipity and all that that comes along to support us when we take what are really tiny little steps on the path, the universe just opens up and offers us so much more than what we could possibly have expected and imagined. Yeah. So, you know, Wonderfully so said. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It's so true. It's like if we, if we, um, yeah, you know, and I, I, I personally believe that we do have some form of life plan before our soul came into this thing. And, but, but thankfully we've forgotten that because otherwise you're right, we would be, <laughs> we'd be scared and running it. And one step at a time, trusting that there is always support, both spiritual and human support along the journey. So I appreciate that step by step. And just to clarify for those who don't know what net caring is, I think everyone here probably knows, has heard me talk about consistent content a million times. And I'm really <laughs> grateful that you are being um, a model for that for other people as well. So of course, below this video, um, I'll link to your social media and people can can give some public accountability to you to keep consistent. You know, <laughs> those watching this will <laughs> will expect that in some form, some form. And but net caring, yeah, I think that's also one of the strengths that I've noticed from you um, that you you prioritize it and that you do it so well and uh, with a wonderful sense of humor as you connect with people in a, in a way that's from the heart and without agenda. And that's the key. It's like the net caring is a heart based connection that uplifts uh everyone and naturally 
the consistency of doing that leads to opportunities yeah. because most people don't keep in touch. <laughs> most people don't do whether it's net caring or networking. And so by doing it in such a um, energetically aligned way, uh, of course, the opportunities come. So, um, and you're, you know, you're, you're doing things like webinars, like you have a, what, a webinar tonight, for example. So I'm excited to hear more how that goes. Okay. So with our remaining, you know, three minutes left or something, um, share with the audience how, if someone is interested in working with you, um, what does that look like? What do you offer? Yeah. Okay, so I do have a a short four week um, program coming up, which is a group program, which is going to be the the run off from the the webinar. The webinar is going through basically the steps that I'm going to be doing in the group program. And you might think, well, why bother with the group program? Then if you're going to tell me what we're going to be doing, but the group program is it's an experiential program that it's not a get the recording and do it in your own time because you won't do it. And I've done, you know, who signed up for courses and they're sitting gathering digital dust? Mm, maybe me. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 about money. It's a practical side of money, but it's also combining it with that energetic side. And you do the work when we're there on the call. We will look at it. How are you feeling about it? Getting in touch with it, looking at your values, all these aspects, and then going, okay, <clears throat> excuse me where are you, you know, looking at um, your numbers, your, your starting point, because, and then where do you want to go with them? Um, what are your values? How are you spending your money? Are they in line with your values, etc.? So it's it's really a practical course steeped in energetic um, work as well. Um, so that's a, the group program. And it's, it's, it's really something that I want to be, it's a start for people with their journey, with their money. It isn't a, you're going to have a PhD in finance by the end of it. It's a starting point. It's getting you to start looking at your money on a regular basis. Working with your money is a lifelong journey. You, you don't get to a point where you know, okay, I know everything. Um, I don't have to learn anything else. You're always learning because you're making different decisions in your business. So that's going to impact you. So I've got the group program and then I work one-on-one -on -one with people. I do do one, um, one-off sessions, mainly so that people can get a feel for learning um, a feeling for how it is to work with me but to be really impactful minimum of three months together six months is really good a year is amazing and and that's fortnightly sessions that I do one-on-one -on -one with people and I find fortnightly is good because it gives you time to integrate what we've done in a session I find I'm a slower processor of things in my life that to have to you know have a session this week and then come back and see you again next week it's too much for me to integrate all of that. So I like that fortnight that it gives you the week in between to integrate what we've spoken about, to implement it, work with it, find out where, where you've had the problems. And then the next time you come along and we see what you've done and where do you want to move forward? And I don't have a blueprint or checklist of what we're going to work through. It really is, who are you? Where are you coming from? Um, what do you want to work on? And each week, I don't have a, right, this is what we're going to, to cover. I come into that session as an open vessel, right, where are you? What do you want to do? If at the beginning you have a specific thing, we can use that as a guide for our sessions. But um, I, honestly, I show up at my sessions as, as an empty vessel and it's right. How can I be of service to you? What do you bring to the table? I'm not going to tell you what to do or how to do it. I will... Um, I provide that space for you to discover that yourself, to touch in with your inner wisdom. Yes, I can get download, downloads and I can share that with you, but I don't want to be somebody's guru. I don't want to them to think, oh, I can't make a decision without Tamsin telling me what to do. Come along and bounce things off me, absolutely, and we can discuss it. But I want you to have the power. I want you to feel empowered with being in your business, with your finances, creating the life that you you want yeah well you've certainly empowered me and the audience today i mean look at me i'm, I'm way shinier now <laughs> than before i before we started uh thanks to you um and the afternoon sun uh but but uh, just to say i mean you know it's interesting i i to say that you you show up with an empty vessel doesn't mean that you don't know your stuff no. And you absolutely do. And obviously in your webinar, you actually teach the steps and, and you have, but it's like only the master 
can actually show up as an empty vessel because it's it's all been integrated and it's like you 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 give your clients what they need at that time so it's really great that you are um you are flexible enough to do that you know so that's really cool well thank you tamsin for your work thank the you. way you do it as well and uh folks the links are below this video so be sure to check out tamsin's website there's social media that you can go see and uh, any questions, you can, of course, comment below and I'll make sure Tamsin sees that as well. So, all right. Thank you, everybody. And thanks, Tamsin, for doing this. Thank you, George.